The A-10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog, is an aircraft that has cemented itself as one of the most iconic and enduring planes in the U.S. Air Force. Developed during the height of the Cold War, its primary design goal was straightforward yet crucial, close air support, CAS for ground troops, particularly in the event of a large-scale Soviet invasion through a critical European corridor known as the Fulda Gap. But beyond its rugged exterior and unmatched durability lies a marvel of military engineering, a weapon so powerful and feared that it defines the very core of the aircraft, reshaping aerial combat and forever changing the battlefield. Imagine this, it's the 1970s and tensions between NATO and the Warsaw Pact are ever present. In the event of conflict, Military planners from both sides anticipated that the Fulda Gap, a roughly 50-kilometer-wide valley in West Germany, would become the front line. The region offered a natural funnel for Soviet forces to push from East Germany into the heart of Western Europe, on a fast track to strategically vital locations like Frankfurt and the Rhine River. It was in this scenario that the A-10 would prove its mettle. Air-land battle doctrine became the centerpiece of U.S. and NATO defense planning. The doctrine emphasized close coordination between air and land forces, aiming to disrupt enemy formations and logistics from the front line all the way to their rear. The A-10 was designed specifically for this role, making it a low-flying, armor-piercing tank killer that could withstand enormous amounts of damage while providing critical support to ground troops in real time. The air-land battle doctrine was a revolutionary concept in U.S. military strategy, born from lessons learned in World War II, Vietnam, and various Middle Eastern conflicts. It recognized that future wars would not be won purely by ground forces or air power, but through their integration. High-ranking officials in NATO believed that the key to victory over the numerically superior Warsaw Pact forces lay in disrupting their momentum. This meant not only engaging Soviet armor on the front lines, but also striking at their supply lines and logistical support deep behind enemy territory. In many ways, this was a counter to the Soviet deep battle doctrine, which emphasized rapid, multi-layered advances deep into enemy territory. The A-10, with its slow, deliberate flight path, became the perfect partner for ground commanders, able to loiter above the battlefield and provide devastating fire support exactly where it was needed, complementing higher flying aircraft that targeted strategic assets farther behind the lines. The role of KAS demands proximity, close to both friendly and hostile forces. The A-10 had to be a rugged and highly survivable platform that could operate from forward bases, which might be little more than dirt strips with minimal infrastructure. Its low-flying role meant it would be exposed to all manner of enemy fire, from small arms to anti-aircraft artillery. This required a design that could endure hits and keep flying. The Warthog became renowned for its durability, often returning to base with extensive damage that would have grounded other aircraft. The plane's design prioritized simplicity and cost-effectiveness. It was built using off-the-shelf parts, ensuring ease of maintenance and quick repair during the heat of battle, echoing the philosophy behind the mass production of Sherman and T-34 tanks in World War II. In a potential all-out war against the Soviet Union, the ability to churn out and maintain massive quantities of equipment was seen as a decisive factor. The A-10's role as a CAS aircraft required it to be more than just a heavily armed platform. It needed to respond to rapidly changing battlefield dynamics. The Warthog's ability to operate from forward bases meant that it could stay close to the front reducing the time between a call for help and its arrival overhead. The nature of the battlefield meant that terrain was often unpredictable. Dusty desert strips in Iraq or rocky fields in Afghanistan, and the A-10's robust landing gear and engines placed high to avoid debris 
made it uniquely suited for these harsh environments. The plane's accuracy was not just a bonus, but a necessity in modern warfare, where avoiding collateral damage was as important as destroying enemy forces. Its AN-ALR-69 radar warning receiver and AN-AAS-35 targeting pod allowed it to locate and engage targets in all weather conditions. A far cry from the aircraft of previous generations that often struggled in adverse conditions. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. It really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any future uploads. Thanks for watching. At the heart of the A-10's fearsome reputation is its primary weapon, the General Electric GAU-8A Avenger. This massive 30 mm rotary cannon was chosen before the plane's design even began, and the entire airframe was constructed around this weapon. The GAU-8 is so powerful that it takes up nearly six meters of the plane's internal space with an ammo drum holding up to 1,150 rounds. Firing 30 millimeter armor-piercing shells, including those with a depleted uranium core, the A-10 was designed to wreak havoc on Soviet tanks. Depleted uranium, known for its extreme density, provides the shells with superior armor-piercing capability able to punch through the heavy armor of Cold War-era tanks like the T-72. The gun's recoil force is so immense that it generates 44.5 kilonewtons of thrust, momentarily cutting the plane's forward momentum by nearly half with every pull of the trigger. Despite this, the gun fires in short bursts, just one or two seconds, allowing the A-10 to stay stable while delivering devastating firepower. The GAU-8A Avenger was not just a gun, it was a symbol of Cold War military philosophy, where raw firepower was seen as the antidote to the Soviet tank divisions expected to pour through the Fulda Gap. Capable of firing 3,900 rounds per minute, the gun could tear through the thickest armor that Soviet T-Series tanks had to offer. The gun's effectiveness came from both the massive kinetic energy of its rounds and the depleted uranium cores, which created an unparalleled armor-piercing capability. This was one of the earliest uses of depleted uranium in military aviation, chosen specifically for its density and self-sharpening properties. Each round created a deadly mix of heat and pressure upon impact capable of turning tank armor into molten metal in milliseconds. The decision to design the entire plane around the gun reflected a singularity of purpose in the A-10's design philosophy. It was first and foremost a tank buster. One of the A-10's defining traits is its survivability. The aircraft's systems were designed with redundancy in mind. It has two hydraulic systems for controlling flight surfaces, and even if both fail, the pilot can still operate the controls manually. The fuel tanks are self-sealing, and the pilot is encased in a titanium bathtub, armor that can withstand direct hits from rounds as large as 23 millimeters. Its landing gear is designed to operate even when partially retracted, allowing the aircraft to land on rough terrain with minimal damage. These design choices ensured that the Warthog could continue to function even when severely damaged. Another key survival feature is the A-10's engine placement. The two General Electric TF-34 engines are mounted high on the fuselage, which serves multiple purposes. It reduces the engine's exposure to ground fire and helps mask the plane's infrared signature from heat-seeking missiles. Moreover, this configuration prevents dirt and debris from damaging the engines during takeoff from rough makeshift runways. Despite its effectiveness, the A-10 has been under constant threat of retirement since its inception. The F-16 Fighting Falcon was initially touted as a potential replacement, and today, the F-35 Lightning II is often discussed as the future of close air support. 
However, while these newer aircraft have cutting edge capabilities like stealth and versatility, neither can replicate the Warthog's sheer resilience and its ability to provide chaos in hostile environments. The A-10 thrives in environments with relatively low-tech adversaries, like the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, where it became a symbol of support for ground troops. Soldiers would often compare the plane's arrival to Gandalf's dramatic entrance at Helm's Deep in The Lord of the Rings, swooping in to turn the tide of battle. The bond between the A-10 and the soldiers it protects is deep, and this connection has helped the plane persist despite numerous attempts to phase it out. While the A-10 was designed to confront Soviet tanks in Europe, the nature of warfare has evolved dramatically. The F-35 represents the future with its stealth capabilities, advanced sensors, and multi-role design. It's built for conflicts where adversaries possess advanced anti-aircraft systems and require planes that can avoid detection and deliver precision strikes from afar. Nevertheless, the A-10 continues to serve because it fills a niche that modern fighters, for all their advanced technology, do not. The Warthog is inexpensive to operate, resilient, and remains a force multiplier on the battlefield. The A-10's place in military history is secure. Born from Cold War fears, designed to be a brutal tank buster, and forged in the fires of modern asymmetric warfare, it's a testament to the value of a well-designed, purpose-built aircraft. Though its future remains uncertain in the face of newer, sleeker planes, the Warthog has proven that sometimes the old warhorse is exactly what you need. Its legacy will endure as one of the greatest CAS aircraft ever built. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth content like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next one.